Hi everyone, and welcome to Sapphire Rose's Superliminal All Collectible Speedrun Tutorial. I'm Samwise, and in this video, we'll be going over the level Cubism. Whether you're just aiming to find all the hidden collectibles for the first time, or are trying to get involved with the speedrun, this guide will show tips and tricks to help you get started. Cubism is a fairly simple level by all collectible standards, mostly involving glitchless movement and a few highly consistent tricks. To begin the level, make sure to get the constellation just to the right of the reception area exit. Angle slightly right when entering, and turn around to find the mug once you're standing towards the back right section of the room, or if you're moving back and to the left if you've turned around. As soon as it finishes the collection animation, start walking back towards the door. From here, it's glitchless movement and a couple minor collectibles before finding the vent housing the red queen piece. This piece can actually be grabbed through the vent. Simply line up like this and jump to grab the piece. Shortly after this, we reach the first trick of cubism, the vault clip. This trick is quite simple with a bit of knowledge. A vault clip is a clip that abuses the ledge grab animation to clip through walls. We'll be using this glitch to skip a few rooms and set ourselves up for the next chess piece. Take the half cube with you and resize it to be about three quarters of the screen height. Deposit the cube in front of the window, then grab the two minor collectibles down the hall. Return to the cube, pick it up, then vault clip through the wall above the window. After launching, place the half cube beneath you, then navigate quickly to the AC unit with the chess piece on it. To guarantee this works, make sure you're directly facing the wall and pressed up against it, then jump while holding W. You should be able to clip anywhere on the window as long as you aren't beneath the exit sign, as this will stop your jump. After you successfully clip, you'll want to clip back in via a specific wall, as shown here. This isn't too difficult, but it is important as the other wall won't launch you when you clip back in. This alternative is documented here just to be thorough, but it is in no way worthwhile to learn. Not to be confused with the similarly named Double Banana Bonkers Square Root of E to the Pi Skip, the infamous jumpless trick, but this is the former strap for this part of cubism. It took pride as being one of the top three hardest tricks in all collectibles, as well as the first of the Double Banana Bonkers name, Thanks, Ina. It is in almost all practical cases slower than the vault clip, but it is theoretically faster since it uses more direct lines. In Sapphire's words, do not try this in runs under any circumstances. The vault clip is the best thing to happen to this category since prop walk. Let's see how it's done. Place the half cube in this section of hallway as big as possible while also leaving a slight gap on either side. Grab the minor collectibles and then come back and perform a slide launch by holding W and double clicking. After a successful launch, remember to turn around and try to land on the AC unit. There are two glitchless alternatives to the vault clip that are pretty self-explanatory. The first one uses the vent cover as a ramp and the difficulty is just getting it to fall over. The best way to do this is to grab the cover close to the ground and then place higher up, effectively rotating it forwards, causing it to fall. Here's the other glitchless method, which just uses parkour instead of the vent cover. Jump up on the canisters in the soda machine and click as you jump towards the chess piece. From here, we'll continue as usual with a few extinguishers and alarms along the way, getting ready for the sliding cube room. Pull out the vent with the blueprint, then hold onto the vertical cube to drag yourself up with it. Note that you have to drop down before grabbing it again. We'll continue glitchless movement turning around for each minor collectible on the way. Now 
The final trick of the level is a warp launch to reach the final blueprint. It's always worth going for, since if you fail the setup, you can easily switch to a glitchless method at any time. This one is quite simple in execution, with most of the difficulty stemming from resizing the side of the cube without slowing down. Make sure you jump before launching, otherwise there is an exceptionally small chance you perform an actual warp. The alternative is the pole jump, just like at the start of the level, which you should be pretty familiar with already. It doesn't lose too much time compared to the warp launch, so it's a great backup. Now it's just a matter of collecting the last minor collectibles, and we're off to Blackout. See you there!